Welcome back. So this is the third and final segment of today's episode uh, where we are here with uh, Sister Onar Elidina talking about diabetes. Now, in this segment, we're going to talk about the new year that's coming up in a few days, and we're all going to make our resolutions. So how do we go ahead and balance those meals that we're going to be having? And so tell us a little bit about uh, your version or your guidance for us on, on balancing our meals. Yeah, absolutely. So I just wanted to say that if you have diabetes, there's no such thing as a diabetic diet. There really isn't. It's really? all about, yeah, it's okay. all about healthy eating. Um, mm -hmm. There is no really such thing as a diabetic diet. So these principles that we teach people who, who are living with diabetes is applicable to anyone who wants to eat well or to lose weight or to feel better. Because it's all about balancing, you know, the amount of carbohydrates you're getting in. So first of all, um, it's all about taking small steps. You know, you don't want to cut anything out. A lot of people right now are on the low carb, I don't know, trend, and they want to, you know, cut out the carbohydrates in their mm -hmm. in their diet. And yes, that is one way of doing it, but having it sustainable over the long period of time, it's it's going to be really hard. So you want to start small. So if you are someone who has you know, a lot of carb for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I'll give you some examples, like if you have cereal. Okay, so cereal is a form of carbohydrate, right? right. And also we put milk in our cereal, which is a form of carbohydrate. And then some people have orange juice or fruit with it, which again is carbohydrates, right? right? So then a lunch would be maybe a sandwich, which again, from the bread, you're getting the carbs. And then, you know, you may have a snack in between. And then dinner, um, especially being South Asian, you could probably yeah. have some rice, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, so all those three meals are really carb heavy. So you just mm -hmm. want to scale back. So maybe, yeah, to even start by keeping one meal low carb, okay? So, for example, if you're someone who loves to have cereal in the morning, a good option for you to, would be to have oatmeal. So oatmeal is a, a specifically st a steel cut oatmeal because it's not as processed. So the more flaky or processed a food is, it's just been processed for very long. So it turns to sugar very quickly. So steel cut oats are all intact. So it takes longer to cook, but it also takes longer for our body to digest that. And it has a lot of fiber in it. Okay, so fiber is key. Um, whether you want to, you know, eat well or lose weight or manage your blood sugars better, you really want to get in more fiber in your diet because it really helps with managing and stabilizing the blood sugars. So again, so steel cut oats as opposed to like a regular flaked cereal would be a great choice to have. Okay, then for lunch, you know, you want to again scale back on the amount of carbs you're having. So think about getting more vegetables in your diet. Okay, so you really want to try to look at your plate and you want half of your plate to be vegetable based. So this could be a form of raw vegetables, it could be cooked vegetables, like um, even as in a soup. Um, and you just want to have your vegetables in there. Okay. Because vegetables are again high in fiber, they're high in a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals, and it keeps you full because there's a lot of water in them. So, and then you can have your protein, which is you want a quarter of your plate to be a protein source. So it could be chicken, it could be beef, it could be fish, it could be lentils. And then the other rest remaining uh, quarter of your plate, you want it to be a carb if you, if you needed it. Okay. And, and the dinner? Yeah. So same or, for dinner. Oh, so same for dinner. Okay. You want to just, you know, you don't want to completely cut out the carbs because, you know, it's going to be really hard to do. Yeah. So if you're someone who typically has two servings at dinner, so just limit yourself to one serving. Start okay. there. So portion control. Exactly. It's right. all about portion control. That is the most important thing you can take away for any for for um, managing a health condition like diabetes, or for just health or e better um, eating habits, and for okay. weight loss. Now, I mean, all, everything you mentioned, um, all the all the meals that we should prep. Yeah. Obviously, um, I'm sure a lot of the the audience might might agree with this that it's not always easy. Yeah. Um, to, to structure your diet that way. I mean, we all live busy lives and yeah. um, I guess it can be a bit of a challenge to uh, prep such meals. What's your advice to them, just in, 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 uh, briefly? I mean, what, what's your best advice for, for people like that who want to make that effort yeah. to, to start eating healthy and having a more balanced diet, but sometimes it may not be the easiest thing to achieve? Mm -hmm. um, any, any tips there? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, right now, especially at the grocery store, there's so many easy finds that we can 
get. So for example, one thing that I love personally is having those ready made salads available. Mm. Right, so those, those are easy to pick up. So, you know, it just reduces the amount of chopping and preparing you have to do. Um, so having like, you know, a big salad, just keeping it in your fridge and it'll last you for a couple of days. And it's a great way to round out your meals. You know, buying um, vegetables that are already cut up and washed for you. So you just have to kind of cook them. Right. Again, taking those shortcuts um, at the grocery store are really gonna help you. And again, it's just all about, you know, balancing your meals. So. Think about it, have one day set aside to kind of plan out your meals, what you're gonna do, so that when you know, life gets busy, you have a, you have a backup. Excellent. You know, so those are some great ways, you know, batch cooking, um, you know, just planning out how you're gonna be eating for the rest of the week, taking into account like certain activities and so forth, right. and just being as organized as you can. And it could be just simply as you know, organizing your lunches for the week. You can start small, you don't have to kind of plan out every single meal mm. um, you know just pick one meal and start there and eventually it'll become a habit you know they say it takes 21 days to form a habit so sticking with one thing one or two things that you can you know be sustainable for you that you can actually do over a long period of time you'll definitely see some success excellent um, any as we conclude today's uh, today's episode any anything that you want to throw in that we may not have discussed uh, as far as diabetes or even living healthy uh, healthy life or healthy diet anything that we may not have discussed that you want to add yeah so okay so people who have diabetes you know they're typically put on medications and um, you know this doesn't mean that once you're on these medications you can kind of not worry about your diet um, so that's I think that's a big uh, misconception <laughs> that right. I'm on the meds so I can have as much ice cream and cake right. as, I, as I would want. Yeah, so that's the thing though, because diabetes is a progressive disease, um, you know, you need to really be on top of your diet. And I know we talked about diet a lot, but exercise is also just as important, especially with diabetes. Okay, so um, remember how I talked about in the beginning how there's too much sugar in the blood right. and it has nowhere to go essentially? because it can't go into the cell. So exercise is honestly a form of medication. So when you exercise, the cells open up and take all that sugar in because it needs that energy to move. Right. So even 30 minutes, um, you know, that's what's recommended a day of walking, of anything, of any kind of movement will really help manage your blood sugars. Not only that, but it helps you, puts you in a better mood, it helps you sleep better. There's so many health benefits of exercise, but it should really be seen as a form of medication. Excellent. Uh, no, this is such um, such great information, and I really want to take this opportunity and thank you for yeah. for for being here today and sharing all this information with us. Um, uh, I I do hope that you've all uh, enjoyed today's episode. Um, I will be putting uh, Sister Onar's uh, contact information uh, on the screen, her uh, her social media channel. So if you have any questions for her, um, please uh, feel free to uh, to reach out to her. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please do share this content uh, with people that you think might benefit from it. And uh, I hope to see you again in, in our next episode. Thank you and bye-bye.